Can't wait for the dangle trade tree on this one. It'll be a little confusing, but we'll get through it. Mark Bergevin spoke to the media beyond the 18-word concession speech given via statement that read, Carolina has used a tool available to them in the collective bargaining agreement, and we accept that decision. Got a little more out of them today. Here to help us figure out exactly what happened is Julian McKenzie of The Athletic, among other things. Welcome back to the show, Julian. I, pros I promise no mom's talk today, okay? <laughs> that's all good uncle yeah. tim uncle tim it is all good man just happy to be back on uh great to have you back on so so what's your biggest takeaway from the bergevin press conference today beyond the 18 word concession the biggest thing i took away from that conference is the fact that mark bergevin at least kind of opened the door to acknowledging the fact that there was some mishandling uh with the with the spirit cock and yemi's development here a lot of people are going to look at the position he was drafted in third overall in 2018 i still maintain that the canadians you know drafting the spirit kakanami at that position i don't think it was a bad pick for them to make they were in a, they were in a position where they needed centers and Jesperi spirit being selected at that position it was going to look like a good thing for them the only thing is the development he probably could have used another year in finland and mark bergman acknowledged that you know what in hindsight maybe that's something they could have done he did add that in the last two seasons he saw things that perhaps having him in the minors or in finland might not have necessarily helped but the fact that he acknowledged that maybe at the beginning of his career having him spend another year in finland before making the jump to professional hockey might have been the best thing for his development and i still maintain that if if Jesper Kakanyemi, if it was up to me and i understand i'm not a gm i'm not a scout or anything like that but if it was up to me considering how important he is to or at least he was to the future of this canadians team we wouldn't see Jesper Kakanyemi as a proper player in the lineup until 2022. i think the canadians at least have and they also had mentioned this in the press conference today they've kind of acknowledge that you know with the prospects they have now it's worth you know giving them that time to at least be at least getting some more seasoning ryan paling who had that amazing debut against the toronto maple leafs he's just coming off a year now where he was in the american hockey league cole caulfield well they let him stay in the american hockey league but even before then uh he had that other year in college they could have signed him to a, to an elc last year but we all know that didn't end up working out of course and Caden gooley is still in the pipeline as well maybe the canadians have learned from this and they said you know what we're going to try to you know take our time a little bit more but the asperic cock and yemi thing at least for mark bergman he's willing to admit there is some lessons to be learned in the handling of all this that was the biggest takeaway i took from the presser today okay so jesse asked me in the opening block what i thought and i said i thought that bergman was caught between a rock and a hard place which was overpaying asperic cock and yemi or overpaying the arizona coyotes for christian dvorak do you think he made the right decision he did something, and I was surprised at something. the fact that the DeVore... Well, well here's the thing, me. right? Yeah. I, here's the thing. I think uh, I was ready for a situation where Jesperi Kakanyemi would leave Carolina, would leave for Carolina, and Monday hits, and we're on TV, radio, whatever format you want, mm -hmm. and we're talking about who the Canadians are going to fill that void with. Is it Christian Devorak? Is it Thomas Hurdle? Is it Jack Eichel? Is it somebody else that they're going to, you know, trade for and put in that position? Are they going to say, hey, you know what? Jonathan Joyce said he's willing to be at center. We're going to try that in training camp. Mathieu Perrault is a guy who they talked to, uh, well, who they acquired in the offseason, and questions were asked whether or not he'd be willing to play at center. He didn't seem all that enthused about it, but that was an option that a lot of fans were looking to throw up out there. So I think the fact that they were quick on the trigger with getting Christian Dvorak for one, I was very surprised about. And the second thing is, yeah, they were caught between a, a rock and a hard place. Of course, when you're in a position of weakness at that, it, with the center ice position, you have to do something. But they did something at least, and I'll give them some points for that. And Christian Dvorak, I think now the question is, is how he'll progress with all the new line mates that he'll have. I was trying to think about it today. Is he going to play with Mike Hoffman? Is he going to play with Brendan Gallagher? Is Josh Anderson a viable guy to play on his right? Is Jonathan Drouin another uh, option for him as well? And I've talked, uh, some fans were messaging me today saying, hey, they see him as a 50 point, 60 point player. 
who knows what's going to happen with with Christian Dvorak. But uh, the fact that they were able to at least get somebody who they identify as a, as a responsible two way center, a guy who they don't even have to think about whether or not he is a center or he isn't a guy who plays a 200 foot game. He checked off a lot of boxes that Mark Bergevin likes in a player. Uh, I think at least even if they did have to pay quite a bit to, to get this type of player, he at least fills some kind of need for this organization going forward. All right. Uh, about a minute here left. My friend Anthony Stewart sent out a great tweet earlier today with just an Einstein quote that says, and I quote, a clever person solves a problem, problem a wise person avoids it. Despite the Dvorak pickup, the Habs just gave up a third overall pick that has shown some real flashes because of the Aho offer sheet. The fans' relationship with Bergevin has been up and down, to say the least. Where are they now? Uh, sh I mean, I guess it really depends on who you ask. There are fans who definitely are not going to forget about the Logan Mayu selection, and at least one journalist asked about it during the press conference uh, today with regards to him being suspended uh, indefinitely in the OHL. Uh, and there are other fans who are at least content that he at least tried to fill the center ice position again with the Christian Dvorak trade. I think it really depends on who you talk to here. It's yeah. kind of hard to just kind of get a general sense of what fans are thinking. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. You just make a run to the cup. You've got a goaltender who is in his prime, maybe even on the back end of his prime. And then you've got this great young team and you don't know where the balance is, which is what you haven't known for years in Montreal. If it had ended up with a cup instead of just the final, no one would be worried right now. But as you know, in Montreal, they ask for more. You don't celebrate 24 <laughs> of them because you got to a final. Uh, listen, appreciate you, Julian, as always. And uh, we, uh, we were able to get through it uh, without Donovan Bailey and Michael Grange making jokes <laughs> about other things here. So we appreciate My mom appreciated you. it, though. Oh, nice. At least. Yeah, it's all good. That's something, right? Yeah, no worries, man. Uh, big fan of Do She's a big fan of Donovan Bailey, so she really appreciated it. Awesome. Uh, appreciate you. Thanks for doing this. We'll talk again soon. Likewise. Peace, guys. Julie